Hello, everybody. Um, I'm your teacher, Dr. Steve Cohen from the USF Health College of Global Sustainability, and I'm here with Jorge, and your last name? Amaya. Amaya. Mm -hmm. Jorge Amaya, who's originally from Medellin, the very city that we've been visiting with our Mercy University students for the past two years working on sustainability projects. We're now at the Rosebush Consumer Medical Science Center, and welcome. Thank you very much. Your second visit here. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a very special treat that I brought back from Choquetan, where you visited, mm -hmm. outside, I think it's the east of Medellin in the mountains, if I'm not sure. Um, mm -hmm. South, um, southwest. I southwest, think. well, yeah. I'm completely turned around, I'm upside down, so southwest of Medellin. Anyway, it's, uh, it's about two hours, three hours away from uh, city center. And when we were out there up in the mountains at a cacao plantation, the family was also trying to commercialize what they call algaroba, which is the Spanish word for carob, algarob, carob, the Middle Eastern plant. And it is a legume, it's in the leguminose, uh -huh. but it is not the carob pod that we know in the Middle East, the long, thin one that has the, the sized uh, sort of beans that start out as, um, as green and then they shrink down to the little carob seeds that we know were used in the Middle East as a measurement for weight. And the reason why you talk about 14 karat gold or about 20 karat diamonds is because they would take carob seeds and put them on one side of the scale and put the gold or the diamonds on the other and see how many carob seeds, if it was 20 carob seeds, it would be 20 carats. And that became 20 carats. I see. Or 14 carat gold because they'd put the seeds. Those seeds start out looking like lima beans and then they shrink down to a uniform size and shape, which is why Middle Eastern cultures use them because they had a known dried shape and, and weight that they could measure. This probably came from Spaniards trying to give common names that they knew from the Middle East and same to indigenous New World plants, but it actually is, I believe, Hymenia uh, in the same family as Carob, and it's known in Jamaica as Thinking Toe. And apparently many peoples throughout from Brazil all the way through Colombia out into the Caribbean depended on this as a source of fiber, as a source of sweetener, much as they will use canela today to sweeten things, or coconut sugar, because it's very sweet. And they also used it as a uh, filler for making what we now call smoothies to add into drinks. Uh, but it has good nutritional properties. We'll open this up in your honor. But you've never seen this or heard no, of it? No, I haven't. I haven't. Um, um, there are some, some uh, plants that I, I'm you know, not familiar with that, and, and also because I, I left uh, my country many years ago, I still don't have the input on everything that is going on right now. So yeah. I haven't had the, the privilege. Of and of course, your country has one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. It has more plants and animal species than any other country on the face of the earth, and so it's almost impossible to get to know them. And they're all in peligro de extinción. Uh, this one in particular, the farmers said that everybody cuts it down to grow annual crops, and so these trees are very slow growing, so they're facing a dilemma. So if they can't commercialize it, then these trees will come down and they will not be replaced. So we're trying to help this family uh, to develop a market for it. But the first Caref thing is to get to know it. I guess, careful your finger, It is very hard. As you can see, it's a little soft right that, that's why maybe people not consuming it. Machinery, it. but you can definitely take care of it. It's just not that difficult, obviously. Let me see if I can break it. There we oh. go. Okay. So okay. this is what the seed looks like covered by all this fiber. And if we take a spoon and spoon out of it, let's see here. Here comes another seed and another seed. And when we arrived in Sopetran and we went up to the finca, they had bowls of this prepared for us as a, as a powder that you could add to drinks. But you can see it has that number, I guess three seeds in one side and probably two, it's probably about five seeds per, there you go, the other one, the other one's out, a seed per, uh, per thing. And if you go ahead and sample it, it's not cocaine, so we don't snort it. <laughs> and has a kind of creamy quality to me. Some sweetness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a sort of tart sweetness. How would you describe it? Um. Now my lipstick is turning to it. Now I will. It's 
there is a um, uh, a curve that we make out of uh, sugar cane. Can I have some? And it's called al What is it? Al uh, algaroba. I don't mm -hmm. like al We have some uh, similarities I don't to want that, it. that taste of al -pandoki. Is it like al right? Uh, well, the texture and a little bit of the flavor. And uh, the other one is made of um, sugar cane and panela. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works really well in a smoothie, I have to say. With some almond milk. And then it adds a lot of vitamins and a little bit of protein, amino acids. I can see they sell it in Sopotran in the market. They sell it in big plastic bags as a powder that people add to their meals. They mm -hmm. sprinkle it on cereal. They, they put it in uh, if they're making huevos. So there's definitely something to it. It has that body. The Jamaicans call it thinking toe. I don't, is it think here? Because I don't see any. No. Don't notice that. No, do you, you said you smell something? Thinky. You can have thinky? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I don't see it that way at all. I see it says sort of a. I don't know how to describe it. Is it thinky noise? No, yeah, try it. try it's thinky. It. Let me see. It's smell it nice. You smell Here, it. Give me the camera. Do you smell it thinky? No. A little bit thinky? Maybe. I got a little bit stinky, Daddy. It does look like you're cutting cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so that's one of the hopes in the project that we have is to help commercialize this and think of recipes yeah, that people one. could make with it and mm -hmm. you know interesting. Give another because it's a no it's thingy. a it's a very tall no, no, um, you know like these oak trees. It's very big in the forest. It satisfies uh, yeah. the habitat requirements for a lot of wildlife and it acts as a good madre de cacao or madre de café so as a, as a semi-shade tree mm -hmm. since it's a legume it doesn't have big broad leaves it has small leaves so it lets the sunlight through right but it has a lot of spreading canopy mm -hmm. so there's a lot of advantages to having it and we're hoping we can cultivate some of these seeds here at rosebud and be able to show this tree very interesting well, thank you for uh, inviting me to uh, try it for the first time. <laughs> I learned something new. Excellent, thank you.